you are tuned in to a fireside chat with Zany Mystic. Join us now on another exciting metaphysical journey. Relax, tune in, drop out, and take a seat by the fire as we explore new realms and possibilities. This is Magenta Pixie. You can find me at magentapixie.weebly.com. But now, here is Zany Mystic and guest. Enjoy the show. Greetings. Welcome to a fireside chat with Zany Mystic. I'm your host, Lance White. Tonight, my guest is Melon Thomas Benedict. After suffering from a terminal illness in 1982, Melon Thomas died for an hour and a half and he was monitored showing no vital signs. Miraculously, he returned to his body with a complete remission of the disease and one of the most inspirational near-death experiences known to date. While on the other side, Mellon journeyed through several realms of consciousness and beyond the light at the end of the tunnel. He was shown during his near-death experience in holographic detail, Earth's past and a beautiful vision of mankind's future for the next 400 years. He experienced the cosmology of our soul's connection to Mother Earth, Gaia, our role in the universe, and was gifted with access to universal intelligence. He brings back from his near-death experience a message of hope and inspiration for humanity, delivered with a joy and clarity that is refreshing. His depth of feeling and passion for life is a gift to be shared. So let's welcome him to the show now. Hi, Melon. How are you? Hi, I'm doing great. Uh, <laughs> good to be on the airwaves with you. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Well, I, I read your story uh, some time ago, and it was just uh, blew me blew me away. The the uh, where you went and what you did and uh, what you saw and <laughs> how things work. And I know that we don't have a lot of time to to get into that. So uh, I suggest that people go to your website at uh, www.melon-thomas.com where your entire story is uh, on your website. So um, what, what do you feel is one of the most important messages that you've distilled from your experiences on the other side? Well, uh, by far, by far, um, you know, uh, before I died uh, and lived to tell about it, uh, um, I was uh, thick as a brick. I didn't believe in any kind of spiritual nature at all. And um, what I what I did learn on the other side was something that changed my life in a big way. And that's I was I was uh, shown how to look at everything through the Gaia perspective, G A I A, mm -hmm. to look at look at the entire Earth and the, in fact the entire solar system. System and universe as a as one living organism ah. that's highly interactive and uh, and when uh, what that did for me was something uh, amazing. Uh, uh, I'll give you a metaphor for that. Uh, I was looking at the world like looking at a beautiful painting one inch at a time, and I couldn't make any sense of the world. Mm -hmm. The Gaia perspective gave me the perspective to see the whole painting at once. Mm. And so suddenly, you know, when, when you're only looking at a, at, a, at a painting one inch at a time, part of it may look like hell, and part of it <laughs> may look like heaven. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Depending on which part you're focused on, you know. Right, right. Um, well, you know, I, I have to get this out of the way early because there's so many people that I know that are uh, absorbed with various uh, conspiracies and various elements of uh, the dark and the control systems that are in place that are, uh, you know, uh, ruining the food supply and the rest of it. So what you're saying then might be that um, that is not going to be something that we need to worry about? Well, well, you know, uh, life is something you need to uh, always keep an eye on, so is freedom, <laughs> and you need to be highly interactive with it to uh, stay alive and thrive, of course. But, uh, but uh, you know, what my talks are about, my workshops are about, is, is showing people that as things are right now, and I know this will stun people, mm -hmm. they'll find it unbelievable, is that as things are right this moment, things are 95% better than they've ever been. Wow. And I, I like to spend time uh, uh, sh showing this to people in a multimedia way. Wow, that's wonderful. Now, isn't that a stretch? <laughs> yeah. Well, yes. <laughs> 
a little bit. Yeah. Maybe you can fill in a few of the little pieces so that we can uh, access uh, the reality that you that you're sharing with us. Well, you know, I, I, will, uh, I think, uh, and, and forgive me for saying this, but I, I think especially Americans are spoiled rotten. Mm -hmm. We don't even realize what we have. We complain about the things, the little things that we don't get. Um, but, you know, as far as uh, conspiracies, everything in the universe has a conspiracy. It's called gravity. It's, it's called uh, fighting for light in space. Plants do it. The bugs do it. Stars yeah. do it. Mm -hmm. Everybody does. In fact, I have my own active conspiracy. I've been working on for years now. It's called, uh, my, my conspiracy is um, called Bringing Heaven to Earth. Oh, nice. <laughs> I like that one. So, so you know, uh, only if you're, you know, if you're, uh, if you're not interested in anything at all, you, you probably not, don't have any, any view on how you'd like the world to be. And I usually find that the biggest complainers are these people. That have yeah. that don't participate and have and and don't really uh, uh, get the beauty and the uh, situation we're in in the world today. You know, for the first time in in all the history of the world, technically, starting at around 1975, actually. So you know, catch up. Uh, technically, we're at a place we've never been at before in the entire history of the world, and that is, we can technically feed, clothe, comfort and educate every human on earth and, and return this earth to a garden. And for people to say, oh, there's a conspiracy in the way, or this president's doing that, <laughs> or this is doing that, you know, that's, I'm afraid that's not big enough. The, the Gaia program overrides all of this. It's, ah. in fact, beyond intelligence. You know, there, if you just look at the universe just through the in intelligence lens, you're going to miss most of it. Uh -huh. Just as if you look at the universe through just the spiritual lens. You're going uh -huh. to miss most of it. You have uh -huh. to look at it with the whole rainbow. Wow. And to say that any human conspiracy can override <laughs> universal self-correction. <laughs> it, 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 it's like uh, saying that um, a grain of sand on the beach can take over the ocean. Yeah, and um, uh, and you know the truth is there's always there's always uh, the human the human uh, species is the youngest species on planet Earth, uh -huh. and uh, we act like children, <laughs> and uh, you know some of the children want all the cookies and don't want anybody else to have any, but it doesn't mean we're all going to grow up to be hideous murderers. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, I, I don't make light of war. I don't make light of the ecology. We need to be the best stewards we can, and we are certainly at a time in history where war doesn't make any sense at all for any purpose whatsoever and for any of our leaders to take us to war is a complete failure. Yeah. And um, so uh, the next level of citizenship, the next level of universal citizenship is called self-initiation. Mm. We actually have to participate. We actually have to hold our leaders that we elect accountable. Mm -hmm. When's the last time we've held anybody accountable? Mm, you know, they remember. promise us a million things to get into office, and then they don't do any of it. it right. No, no, we, we need to, that time should be over just about now, you know. I sure hope so. I'm waiting. <laughs> yeah, that's called self-initiation. And okay. uh, so, you know, Wall Street and, you know, uh, now, now as, um, as even Senator John McCain has said in one of his speeches, we have a military-industrial congressional complex. <laughs> <laughs> that's really funny. <laughs> you know. <laughs> no kidding. Um, and and the other thing too is that we're beginning to see um, the human race is is the most graceful species on this planet. And I know that'll shock people too. Yeah. We are so full of grace; it's huh. amazing. Because you personally may not see that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Um, we have created th such graceful concepts as charity. Uh, how about retirement as a concept? You know, we're the only ones that have retirement in our plan, <laughs> let alone you know. And the the uh, the um, the advance of charity, and in fact, the whole concept of the end of poverty on planet Earth is well established now. Yeah. And some of the greatest minds on the planet are all actively working on this next phase, and that yeah. is the greatest step humanity will ever take is when we step out of this survival world together and we're technically there the beautiful news is we can do it it's not only possible now it's inevitable well uh, that is really good news for all of us uh you know that have been holding on for uh to a thread for a long time now um one of the things that you mentioned is that um 
Oh, yes, uh, that you you talk about a pole shift, and I like the way you express this. You said that the pole shift is a shift in consciousness. Um, would you want to elaborate a little bit on that? Because so many people are also concerned about the various prophecies which you talk about in your CDs and, and so on and so forth as ending. Yes, that's uh, one of the major lessons I learned uh, when I was with the light is that we are coming to the end of the end of the world. <laughs> Thank God. Um, the end, the end. <laughs> yeah, the, and you know, um, basically, especially what's happened since the 1850s with fundamentalism, religion is that the Bible has been cut and pasted to where it doesn't make any sense and is not relative anymore to reality. Mm. And um, uh, all the ancient prophecies came. All the ancient prophets and their prophecies were about their own times, and they all came and were true in their times. Uh -huh. Armageddon happened 2,000 years ago. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, so I'd say be careful of your prophets and your prophecies, <laughs> because this is mass consciousness, and you get right. enough people to believe any one thing, and it stands a pretty good chance of happening. You know, like if everybody believes their uh, their uh, world is going to end, well. It just might. But right. the good news is that most people on planet Earth, I'd say 99% of people on planet Earth, don't buy this at all. Thank God it's the saving grace of, the, of everyone else. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But the, you know, the ancient legitimate prophecies um, have all come to an end, and they are ending. And uh, they are ending in 2012, 2020, 2040. And the last legitimate prophecy, 2060, is all ending in most of our lifetimes. Mm. Um, and and so uh, you know the, the if you look at the pattern of life on Earth, life on Earth has withstood everything this entire universe can throw at it, including you know Snowball Earth, 650 million years ago when the entire Earth froze over and everything died but spirulina. Mm -hmm. And the amazing thing is is that of the and we survived that you and I survived that. Mm -hmm. You know the the uh, one of the amazing amazing things to realize is that of the probably 10 trillion cells in our body, over 7 trillion of them are microbes mm. that have been alive since the beginning of life on planet Earth. Mm. And they're in us. They're most oh. of us. And so we're sort of like Noah's Ark in a way, and our DNA is that way too. Wow. Well, and another thing that you mentioned is that uh, uh, our, that we're uh, each one of us is um, uh, is a... Uh, <laughs> I lost my thread. I lost my uh, thread of thought here. I, well, anyway, uh, pull that just, super string. <laughs> yeah, really. The gist of it is, is that each of us is um, is like a god in our own universe. That, that the whole universe has access to all that is. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, one of my dear friends, Cleve Baxter, who I still know to this day and going to go down and visit him next week in San Diego, uh, you know, he discovered plants have feelings back in mm -hmm. the 60s, remember him. Uh, but he, his discovery, uh, which is called primary perception, I was, I was told by the light to look up this guy, Baxter. And I was told that his discovery of primary perception was one of the most important discoveries humanity will ever make. It's not, you know, the most important, but one of the most important that humanity will ever make. And that is the understanding of how everything in this universe is connected to everything else and communicates simultaneously without time lag. And, and this also explains how a shaman can talk to a plant and the plant can tell the shaman if it's a medicine plant. You see? Mm. And, and how psychics can talk to pets and how, how, you know, all of nature is speaking to us. It's mm. just that, uh, till you get to a certain vibration, you don't hear it. Right, right. And, and with, uh, with cell phones and televisions and distractions, it's a little bit difficult to, uh, to uh, get those, uh, uh, vibrations, isn't it? Well, it's true, but we, we need to control technology in our lives. You know, we're, we're like children, and, uh, you know, you've got a whole plate full of candy and a whole <laughs> table full of candy. You're not supposed to eat all the candy at once. <laughs> right. And technology is the same way. It's candy, and we yeah. need to, no matter how much technology is produced for us, we don't need to consume it all. Yeah, right. And uh, we need to control it in our lives, and especially in our, our living environments. And I remember, you know, I'm old enough to remember when, um, when they were just 
fantasizing about computers. They kept telling us uh, how much uh, computers were going to set us free, and we'd have all this leisure time. And you may remember this back then. We were all yeah. worried about what we were going to do with all this leisure time. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> they lied to us. <laughs> you know, no kidding. <laughs> you know, I, when I was more vital signs. Miraculously, he returned to his body with a complete remission of the disease and one of the most inspirational near-death experiences known to date. While on the other side, Mellon journeyed through several realms of consciousness and beyond the light at the end of the tunnel. You are tuned in to a fireside chat with Zany Mystic. Join us now on another exciting metaphysical journey. Relax, tune in, drop out, and take a seat by the fire as we explore new realms and possibilities. This is Magenta Side Chat with Zany Mystic. I'm your host, Lance White. Tonight, my guest is Melon Thomas Benedict. After suffering from a terminal illness in 1982, Melon Thomas died for an hour and a half, and he was monitored, showing no. He was shown during his near-death experience in holographic detail, Earth's past, and a beautiful vision of mankind's future for the next 400 years. He experienced the cosmology of our soul's connection to Mother Earth, Gaia, our role in the universe, and was... Pixie. You can find me at magentapixie.weebly.com. But now, here is Zany Mystic and guest. Enjoy the show. Greetings. Welcome to a fire...